Well, our next question, Jim, was sent in to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Lewis of Lynbrook, Long Island. Of course, Lynbrook, best known as being where the White Castle is on the south shore of Long Island. I could say that from past experience. Wait a minute, there's only one White Castle? On the south shore, on that's the-, the only one I know of, yeah. Holy mackerel, you people are really deprived of good eating up there. We have nothing but good eating up there. We have the best Italian food you'll get in the world. Oh, for heaven's sake, you're just talking about you're on a diet of of stale, chewy bread and grain that you're grazing on, and you don't even get cheese on your burgers, and, and, and and you don't have biscuits and gravy, and now you're telling me there's only one White Castle I get on the whole on my, island. I get cheese on my chicken parmesan, which you can get <sighs> on Long Island or even here in North Jersey better than anywhere else in the world. We have great kosher deli. There's nowhere else in the world that has kosher deli like we do. Great bagels. Bagels. The Chinese food is immaculate. Wait a minute. <laughs> immaculate? <laughs> How is that a, a description of food? <laughs> immaculate. It's, it was a... <laughs> It's it was a I perfect said it, Chinese. What did I just say? It was a perfect Chinese call. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right. What's the next question? And by the way, one White Castle may be too much because you White Castle is a great idea in your head, and yeah. then you go there and you eat it and you feel awful for the next two years. Well, no, it's only more like three days. But actually, and actually, there's a a a, a an age that you get because if you're under 25 you can eat it with no ill effects but after 25 or 30 then the ill effects start m- multiplying the older you get i have to really I have to go ahead when i eat white castle now i have to check myself in as an inpatient at the at the medical facility for the next three days i never ate at crystal because i heard the horror story oh. the fan week about the first year half the fan week crew got sick from crystal and then oh. the second year marty gorman and andy dragos went to Crystal, and while they were in there, <laughs> this is the greatest story, while they were in there, some person had one of the burgers and went into a seizure, <laughs> and Bob Armstrong saved the person, which is always like, where did he come from? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it really happened. But how does Crystal compare to White Castle? Oh, no, Crystal, no, no. Crystal is a, a, a the shame of the South. It's a White Castle imitator. They put mustard on the fucking things, and they're rotten enough as it is. Everything that's ever been on the Crystal menu sucks donkey dicks, and they should all be closed down immediately. It's poisonous. That is the only place, when I lived in Morristown, Tennessee, that was the only place to get food after 10 o'clock at night was the Crystal, and I would go hungry. I would go hungry all night rather than go get Crystal. Wow. So there you have it. The question from Lewis from Lindbrook. Thank you guys for what you provide on the show. My question is a follow-up from another Boy, question. Boy, that was a really full-throated combo. Thank you guys for the shit you do. My question is a follow-up from another question asked on last week's drive through When Dan from California asked you, ask your few... I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to translate this. It's when, not Charlie now. When Dan, no, it's certainly not. When Dan from California asked about Taz on commentary, the discussion came up about AEW's commentary team. Jim, when Brian asked about having a third person on commentary emphasizing the moves, you said it wasn't necessary. I have to ask you about your opinion about Joey Styles because he was the announcer in ECW that seemed to do both storytelling and emphasize the wrestling moves. Okay. End question. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, well, we went from a three-person booth to a one-person booth. Uh, no, I was saying there's no need for three people. I don't like three-person announcing teams. I don't think most announcers like three-person announcing teams. Uh, nothing against any of the three people in most cases, just that it would be better if there was only two of them. When Excalibur's involved, it would be better if there was none, if they just broadcast the fucking show with a soundtrack of fucking Slim Whitman favorites rather than letting him speak. So there's all kind of different ways to look at it. But with Joey Styles, there was no color guy. He did everything, and, and he, was, he was good at it and very verbose. But one of the reasons was because they didn't actually do the commentary there. Did they not? It, Paul just basically shot everything that happened in the building and they went and, and over like 24 or 36 hours would somehow put together a show that Joey Styles would comment on there and they would do the commentary and post-production. Yeah. 
and in a basement in Westchester County. Yes. Yes. In somebody in the, the guy's basement. Right. Because it, I've mentioned that Paul and I were always like bizarro world, you know, opposites of each other. Danny Davis it w- went insane in when Paul came to OVW right after I was gone because we were so opposite. Whereas I would go into whether it's Smoky Mountain or OVW, I would go into the shows with a format for each episode that we were going to do timed down to within 15 seconds of what it was supposed to be lists of every pre-tape to be shot and checked off voiceover copy to be read every piece of paper done by the time I walked in the building and all the instructions giving at given out forthwith. And then after the show in OVW, it, it would literally take Danny about an hour to just drop the VTRs in the holes we had left. And that was the show was done <clears throat> in Knoxville. We would shoot four shows in one night in Smoky Mountains, so we'd take them back to Tennessee Production Center, but I would do all the notes, and I'd come in with the notes on the post, and it would take like four or five hours to do everything start to finish on a one-hour show. And that's with adding the, you know, the graphics, the lower third, name, Chirons, and everything. The way Paul, I understand, would do things is he would just go in with shit on napkins and stuff jotted down on the back of an envelope and just some ideas. And they would just roll tape on everything that happened in the building that night. And then they would take the tape and they would have these marathon post-production sessions where they would put together a one hour show out of it. And that's why it was so MTV like. And as everybody used to say, the pace was so quick and it just, you know, because they had no idea past ideas what the show was actually going to look like until they put it together and maybe what match they were going to put on it it was completely the and that's why i used to sit and watch the ecw television program in connecticut <clears throat> when i lived up there it was on the new york sports channel or whatever and i would say you know i understood they were yes they were over for that audience and and in the ECW arena, and they did have some good talent, but I couldn't understand why people raved about the TV show because to me, it was edited in a mix master. It was just everywhere. And you could tell that you were not, to me, a successful wrestling television program. You are live for one hour or two hour or whatever period of time. <clears throat> whether it's on tape or not you are you are live to tape or you're in that building you're in that arena that you open up the show in you're in that arena and then the announcers can pitch to tapes or pitch to recaps of last week or pitch to other shows or whatever but you always come back there and it's an hour or two hours of real time in that location that's the way sporting events look and that's a wrestling program when you're just doing highlights and putting shit together afterwards, it's a package show and those can be useful, but that's not the way to do your normal program. And that's, that's never been the way that I did it, whether in OVW or Smoky Mountain or Ring of Honor, I guess now they do that in Ring of Honor. They just shoot a bunch of stuff and they put the show together afterwards. Um, you can't, that's not episodic television. That's highlight television. And, and Paul was using it. I know to, to cover up for either his lack of budget, which he had, and, you know, I'm not knocking him for that, or cover up. Paul was great with smoke and mirrors because he did not have world-class talent up and down that roster. There was a lot of guys that only got over there that never got over anywhere else because Paul was the mad magician with getting people over to his cult audience. But I just, I never liked the, the flow of the TV programs. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? It's it's not like it was a complete program. It's like it was from everywhere. And you hear from so many people that the show doesn't hold up today. And I want to get back to Joey Styles in a moment. But when you bring up how it was, you know, it was the perfect show for that audience at that period of time. Do you see any yes. similarities between that and AEW in terms of the fans on, you know, when you'd watch the ECW arena, the way the fans reacted to what ECW was doing? And AEW, the way the AEW fans love what AEW is doing, do you see any similarities? 
Well, it, when you put it like that, yes, there are some similarities. But at the same time, a lot of the people going to those ECW shows were still, 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 still real wrestling fans you could get some fucking heat out of. I mean, they the Dudleys started a bunch of fucking riots. They had people coming over the rail and shit. You know, th there was some believability in the building, even though a lot of Paul shit was preposterous. He could also make a lot of those people b believe it enough to get involved. And no, now I see the fans, you know, the only ones is, yes, they love everything no matter what. <clears throat> like, you know, I've said it knocking their, their favorite wrestlers now of the AEW crowd is like when I would knock the Rock and Roll Express and get the, you know, death threats from the 14-year-old girls. But there's not any similarity in that the, the AEW audience comes to laugh at wrestling with the wrestlers that are in the ring making them laugh. The, the the ECW crowd didn't come to laugh at the business. Um, wh whatever else you can say about the ECW crowd, they didn't come to laugh at the wrestling business. Uh, the AEW crowd comes if. Why else would you not you know pull out a fucking sniper rifle rifle as soon as you saw Orange Cassidy get in the ring, if you didn't come to a show to laugh at the wrestling business. You know that's uh, they. Th they are fostering this subgenre of wrestling fan that wants to see a silly wrestling show. And that's why I hate them so bad and always will. And would, I'm, you know, sorry, at least I've been consistent <laughs> for the past 25 years. I've fucking knocked people that made wrestling look silly and stupid. And this is the classic, this is the worst ever. So it's not like I'm going to change my tune now. Other people may want to do that for a check. I do not and don't have to at this stage of my life. Um, that's why I'm insulted by these people, because they had a chance to get on national TV, be an alternative to Vince, someplace to once again keep the wrestling business going, and instead they're doing the fucking, they're, they're courting the we want a silly show out of wrestling crowd. And fuck you. <laughs> Another wasted opportunity. You bring up the Dudleys. Allegedly, I am part of the reason why Bubba Ray Dudley was turned heel. Do you know this story? Tell me more. So, 1996, I'm 16 years old. I'm traveling down to Philadelphia for ECW shows. And I stayed at that dirtbag travel lodge. Oh, good lord. And what a piece of shit that place was. And the stories I could tell you from there. But anyway, we're there. And the scuttlebutt amongst all the regulars in the bleachers was how much they hated Bubba Ray Dudley. Not as a heel. He was a babyface. He was a rapping, dancing, stuttering, you know, guy. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people don't remember that. But yes, he was. He danced. He did dance steps. He did raps. But he stuttered and had the fucking original Dudley gimmick with the goddamn gl taped up glasses and that was a goof, right? So he was the lovable Bubba Ray on camera. And as soon as he got to the travel lodge, he was the biggest asshole in the fucking world. <laughs> Some things never change. So the scuttlebutt amongst the regulars, the regulars, and Paul, Paul, let's just say Paul had his plants in that crowd. Paul had people who knew what Paul's agenda was, whether it was chanting Flair must die or whatever it is. Paul had his people. Oh, yeah, there. no, I, I know because he did the same thing in, in, in OVW. That's what run off so many of our regular fans, the TV tapings, because he would put the friends and girlfriends of the amateur class guys across from the hard camera to make noise at the right time minutes to make it look like that you know his shit was suddenly catching on so these people were rejecting Bubba Ray Dudley they hated him <laughs> and no one could do anything about it so I'm like I'm here I'll do something about it you know I've, I've always had a pair of balls on me and I remember it was well, I'm, fortunately fortunately you had them bronzed when they were given to you so you could stick them right <laughs> in your pocket and that's it. But right. anyway well Dave Shearer I remember because he was one of the main guys in the bleachers he had the wrestling lariat newsletter which for a time there, when it first came out, was a really great newsletter. Yes, I remember the Lariat. Even he was like, you know, someone has to do something, and I can't do anything. Everyone hates this guy. So I stayed at the Travel Lodge. Devin Storm stayed in the room with me because he didn't have money, so I let him stay on the second bed in the room. The night before, by the way, we were making phony phone calls. A bunch of us were in there watching tapes. I brought my VCR down, and we're making phony phone calls to people, and Devin Storm uttered the classic line. He was called up some guy, and he says, I'm going to take you by the hair and wipe your ass with my face. <laughs> and then he looked at the phone because he realized that he fucked up what he was trying to say. Uh, but anyway, so 
I love Devin Storm, by the way. He was a Hello, good guy. Devin, if you're good out guy. there. Yeah. So the next yeah. morning, I remember he woke up and he saw me on the floor. I took the bed sheet off my bed and I got red markers from the Travel Lodge gift shop. Believe it or not, there was one. There was a gift shop at that travel. I've only driven by it. I never saw it inside. And I wrote as big as possible on this bed sheet, Bubba must die. And I figured this will get the message. This isn't some little sign held by sign guy. This is a giant bed sheet <laughs> with red marker. Bubba must die. So I bring it to the arena and I tell people I have this and I will be taking it out when the Dudleys are on. You'll be whipping it out. I it's- said, I'm going to whip it out with my big brass balls. As soon as the Dudleys come out, I'm going to need some help because it's big. And by the way, one of the people who helped me hold it up apparently was John Lister. From England. I oh, my God. That. Yeah, I, di- I didn't know him at the time, but he later revealed himself. Oh, yeah, I helped you hold that sign. I thought it was great. Has, now, he's written numerous articles for Fighting Spirit magazine and et cetera. And some books, too. Yeah. So yes. when the Dudleys come out, Babyface, Dancing Bubba Ray comes out, I hold up this sign. The footage is out there. You could see it was on ECW TV. It's I re- f- well, I remember that. I didn't know that was you. It was the fastest zoom in you've ever seen on ECW because they wanted him to be a baby face. However, the sign was so big, you couldn't avoid the sign. And I was in the middle of the bleachers. So all of a sudden it zooms in. All you see is the word die. <laughs> and a close up of Bubba Ray and the word die. And Bubba Ray, I didn't know about this. I talked about it on the 605 Super Podcast a few years ago. And one of the listeners got in touch. They said, look at this. And it was a clip of a shoot interview with Bubba Ray Dudley where he said, yeah, I really wanted to be a heel. And Paul wouldn't let me. And then one day someone showed up at the arena with a sign that said, you know, Bubba <laughs> must die. And Paul finally gave in. So I take credit for Well, Bubba now, Ray wait a minute. Were you at the Philadelphia Civic Center in 1989 when the Midnight Express wrestled the Dynamic Dudes? <laughs> I, I was not. I did not start. What was it? Shane, what John, was it? Johnny sucks Shane's dick on a bed sheet <laughs> from the balcony of the Civic Center there in Philly. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to the original question. Joey Styles. It, it, it was Owen. I wasn't even there. Anyway, go ahead. Joey Styles. Thoughts on Joey Styles. And I guess thoughts on Joey Styles as well as the one-man commentary team, for lack of a better term. Um, well, it, it, Joey Joey Styles was perfect for ECW and the oh my god and the you know and etc. and and he was very producible by Paul to get what he Joey Styles was perfect for ECW to me like Lance Russell was for Memphis. Um just as Lance did not translate uh to WCW because they didn't allow Lance to be Lance and he didn't have the history behind him, and it wasn't the same product, I don't think Joey Styles ever translated to another program as well because he was expected to be, and you know, it, it, it didn't, he didn't, he didn't work to me calling WWF. <clears throat> um, he, he, Joey is a noted Republican crackpot, apparently. I think, I think we had words on Twitter a while back. I I've had so many more words with so many other Republicans on Twitter. I can't remember, but no, he was perfect for ECW and I can see why he didn't really enjoy his WWF run. Um, because you know, it, it, he couldn't be him and that was part of the gimmick. Um, and what, what was it? He did something here recently. Oh, yeah. Gabe Sapolsky fired show. him from Evolve. He was doing a live oh, yeah. show. What he did, he told a joke, right? Imagine that. Well, it was literally right after the election, and everyone was up in arms, and Gabe Sapolsky specifically told him, do not say anything about Donald Trump or the election. And he goes out there, and he makes a joke about grabbing someone by the pussy, referring to a wrestler or a manager, I forget who, as a pussy as opposed to part of the female anatomy, but I actually agree with Gabe here. He ignored the wishes of the guy writing the check and he did it anyway. And he was fired. Well, there you go. I mean, do you agree? I mean, it's one thing telling a joke and and whatever, but it's another thing. If you're specifically told to not say that. And, uh, and, and uh, once again, Joey was trying to, you know, that's what everybody said. Well, they, the NWA knew what they got when they hired Cornette. Cause he's always going to try to be controversial. Like I was trying to be controversial with that joke. 
but that was part of Joey's deal with, you know, the image of ECW. He was going to be controversial. So maybe he thought that he had a loophole where if he could just say grab him by the pussy or whatever, but not mention Donald Trump's name, I don't know. Um, I have to think if the relationship was just wonderfully perfect between them, that that wouldn't have been a fireable offense. That would have been a I'll cuss you out and grab you by the throat offense type of thing. Um, but you know, that, that is a mitigating factor. If somebody specifically said, don't do something, and then you're trying to fucking skirt around on the edge of doing it without doing it and you get, yeah, that's, you know, there you go.